We're here this morning with accomplished CEO and Managing Director John Kippenberger. Thanks for joining us today, John. Thanks, Chris. Good to be here. Do you have a piece of advice for a business looking to take the next step and go global? Yeah, I think the thing I'd say is really take your time to understand the market that you're looking at and the consumer and how you're going to reach that consumer in that market. I think um, paying respect for complexities mm. in these international markets is important. Taking the time to really understand what's the model that's going to allow you to be successfully um, supply product um, commercially in that market, both to you and your partners in that market. Um, and also what else is it going to take to grow a brand? So all of this and taking your time to think through that is going to inevitably lead you to long-term business success. success. I think when you rush those sort of things, um, we all know from experience that to unwind trading relationships can take time. Mm. It takes time, it takes energy, uh, and, and it costs a lot of money. So really take your time to get it right up front. And with that in mind, is it possible to successfully manage a global business within New Zealand or is there a need to have a presence within its international markets? Look, I think, Chris, there's a lot of examples of, of companies and people that do really well managing business from New Zealand. Um, in my experience, having resources on the ground in markets at the right time of your journey uh, in that market um, it gives you a couple of things. It gives you understanding and it gives you projection. Mm. So the understanding from having people or a team in that market, you know, talking to consumers, understanding what consumers are thinking, looking for, how they're buying, how your trading partners are working for you. Um, those are sort of things and insights that you don't get from a sort of a fly-in, fly-out scenario. I'm out of New Zealand or attending a trade show, for example, in Los Angeles once a year. So I think you get a lot of that. And the projection is really nobody knows your business, your culture, your strategy better than your own team. So having them in the market all the time at key meetings, really projecting that onto, onto the market is, is, in my experience, a really powerful way to continue to grow your business internationally. And trying to have success on the global stage can obviously have its difficulties. So what are some of the common pitfalls? Look, I think uh, international business for New Zealand is, is exciting and, and we need um, more international companies coming out of New Zealand. So it is exciting when you get the opportunity. I, I still think it's about taking the time to really understand your business. Mm -hmm. What is it that makes you special? Um, what's, is, is it design? Is it, is it supply chain control? Is it the ability to build brand? Is it your culture? Lots of times it's many of those sort of things. But really understanding what that is and then your strengths and capabilities and then sort of projecting that out to the market to say what parts of that supply chain are you good at, you want to control, you want to own? What are the other parts that you need control, but you can do that through partnerships? And what are the other things that you, parts of it that you can be perhaps a bit more passive in? So really taking time to work through that will, will I think ultimately lead to a, a, a bigger and better and more sustainable success, success for your business. So is there any examples of any Kiwi businesses that have taken those steps and have grown exponentially and are doing well on the global marketplace? Yeah, so lots, lots of examples, and that's what yeah, makes New Zealand you know, such an interesting place, um, that, that we are doing so well ac across the globe. So many, many, uh, certainly uh, in some of the markets that we've been exposed to, we certainly see people like Zespri, mm. uh, they're doing a good job in terms of controlling supply chain, investing in R&D, um, but we see their brand people uh, doing well across a lot of the markets that we've been involved with. Um, the big one at the moment, uh, yeah, certainly A2 Milk, I, I think they've done a good job of, of packaging what could have been a, a complex sort of message to the market. They've really, they've really tightened that up and, and brought some simplicity to that message, which is gaining cut through to, uh, to consumers in different markets. Uh, and then you've got the big brands uh, yeah, on top of that, like uh, Icebreaker. 
Yes. You know, beautiful product, uh, but also a great ambassador, a bit ambassador for New Zealand uh, to a lot of these international markets. So you know, there's three, but there's many, many more. No doubt. Thanks very much, John. And if you'd like to see John speaking at the next PwC Herald Talks event on the 25th of September called The Global Marketplace, you can get tickets at pwcheraldtalks.co.nz.